All right. Thank you very much. It is an absolute honor to be here at Arcadia. I've had the opportunity um, to work with Arcadia in my, in my current job. Um, in three years uh, working with Arcadia and Cindy Rubino, who is out here somewhere, um, over 400 Arcadia students have packaged over 35,000 meals for the hungry, um, it, which is really incredible. So it's just an honor for me to be back at this incredible institution. I also had some dear friends that have gone here and just speak incredibly about Arcadia. So it's an honor to be here and thank you uh, for having me. I'm going to start here today. Um, in the summer of 2006, I, um, I basically um, had an opportunity to go to India. Has anybody here been to India before? couple people. Awesome. I, I found myself in the middle of South India and I was completely by myself within hundreds of miles of seem like civilization and uh, completely by myself and not many people there spoke English. There was a few um, of 20 something year olds that spoke some broken English that kind of followed me around and helped me uh, throughout my way. But I had some professors that pushed me into this opportunity to go to India and this opportunity dramatically changed the trajectory of my life. I spent two months there the entire summer. Um, I went there to kind of work on my business degree that I was getting, but I found that I, many more things happened. I worked, there was a school there with about 200 children, an orphanage with about 250 children, as well as a college, as well as an educational facility where they brought women in from the villages and taught them sewing so that they can go out and, and start their own jobs and own trades. Um, so I, I was kind of put into this just before my senior year. And lo and behold, you probably can't imagine, but I didn't have my, know exactly what I wanted to do with my life before my senior year. Um, but that experience completely transformed me. And I went, went ahead and finished my senior year. I got my business degree and decided that I wanted to use it for international development work. And that's kind of what brought me here today. And without that experience, I would not be standing here in front of you. So I am very grateful for everyone that kind of helped me get to that, that point. Next slide. This is not working. <laughs> All right, great. We'll just go that way. I'll just point. How about that? Awesome. So, um, so really quick overview of Stop Hunger Now. We're an organization. We're an international hunger relief organization. We have a vision of a world without hunger and a mission to end hunger in our lifetime. Think about that. I know it's a kind of a big, grand vision and mission, but that's truly what we're working towards. And Stop Hunger Now was established in 1998, um, primarily as a disaster relief organization, kind of responding to natural disasters. And the founder, Ray Buchanan, quickly realized that we weren't really fulfilling our vision and mission by reacting to natural disasters. Although it was good that we were helping, it really wasn't helping kind of solve the, the, the systematic hunger and poverty that was going on in the areas that we were that were that were that we were helping. Um, so in 2006, we started our meal packaging program, which is an opportunity. Next slide, please. <laughs> an opportunity. Um, actually, uh, next slide. An opportunity where volunteers, you can see this is an event from Arcadia, where volunteers can get together, package these highly nutritious rice meals that we can then ship internationally directly to these areas that desperately need something the most. You can go back one slide. Um, and, and basically, the areas that we are working in um, were about 65 different countries. We started working with about 65 different countries. Stop Hunger Now, just a few years ago when I started, we had three locations. Now we're up to 17 locations uh, in the US and four locations internationally, which I'll get into here in a second. But some current hunger statistics to kind of lay the foundation before I get into the main point of the talk, which is creating a, a global movement to end hunger. Um, some current statistics out there are that 80, 842 million people woke up today living in absolute poverty. Think about that for a second. 842 million people woke up today living in absolute poverty. Basically means they're living on less than the equivalent of a dollar US every single day without access to clean water, medical attention, food, just, just under 1 billion people. A positive spin to that number is actually it's down 17% since 1990, so we are going in the right direction. Um, but out of those 842 um, million people, 21 1,000 people will die today from hunger and hunger-related illnesses. 21,000 people will die today from hunger and hunger-related illnesses, which is more than AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis combined. And I have this um, picture behind me of Citizens Bank Paul Park, sold out Citizens Bank Paul Park. May not happen this year, who knows? Um, but, but if you can imagine a sold out when they were winning a few years ago, a sold out Citizens Bank Paul Park, if you can imagine every two days the equivalent of that number of people are dying be because of hunger and hunger-related illnesses. 
And it's really a tragedy because there's current statistics prove that there's plenty of food to go around. There's almost twice the amount of food produced every single day per person on the planet. So it's not a matter of not having enough food to feed everybody. It's really, um, it's really a distribution issue and getting it to those people that desperately need it the most in a sustainable and transformational way. Um, you can go to the next slide. Uh, that brings me to our meal packaging program. Uh, Stop Hunger Now is all about creating this movement of volunteers and, and, and people around the country and around the globe engaged in packaging meals. Um, one of my frustrations uh, growing up, I, I love to give to charities and help out, but I never really quite knew where, where those funds were going. Some, I'm sure they were going to, to do wonderful things, but this creates an opportunity for volunteers to actually get their hands dirty and package these vitamin fortified meals that are, consist of rice, which is a staple all around the world, um, vitamins, which is a packet that has 22 vitamins and nutrients. We've actually recently entered into a partnership with Heinz out, out in Pittsburgh, and they worked with some scientists at University of North Carolina to develop a specific vitamin packet, about 22 vitamins, that is completely flavorless so that the meals are flavorless so they can kind of change the taste in the country that they go to. But those packets are also part of the meals. We have some dehydrated vegetables, and we use soy for protein, um, which also keeps the meals fully vegetarian because some of the meals we, we, we ship and some of the countries we ship to don't eat meat due to religious reasons or cultural reasons. So it allows us to ship to those countries as well. So before I go any further, I want to just give you a quick glimpse of what an event looks like. So I have a quick uh, couple minute video here that's going to show you that and then I'll jump back on and continue on my talk. Thanks. All right, so uh, over the past few years, um, uh, Stop Hunger Now has packaged over 100, 140 million meals with over 500,000 volunteers all across the U.S. I actually moved back up here. I started down in North Carolina where we are headquartered. I moved back up here in 2010 to start the Philadelphia location, which over, since 2010, we've packaged uh, with about 50,000 volunteers over 8.5 million meals. And our first event happened right here at Arcadia University, which is give yourselves a huge round of applause. And that's a picture uh, from that first event, so I love that picture. But it really doesn't matter that we're packaging all these meals if they're not being distributed correctly. Uh, we would, Stop Hunger Now would just be a fun event. We would be a fun event running company. We would create this really great experience. But if our meals aren't being distributed correctly, it's really all for naught. It's, it's really does, it just doesn't matter because if the meals aren't dramatically changing the lives of people that we're sending food to, it just, the whole event was a waste. So we take great pride and great care at Stop Hunger Now in making sure that these meals go to transformational development programs. And I'm gonna get into that. Before I do that, if you go to the next slide, um, one more. I'm gonna share a quick transformational story of this, this girl named Yurith. Um, if you could see this picture here, has anybody here been to Nicaragua? Couple hands, awesome. Uh, so you see right here, I don't have a pointer, but Managua uh, actually built around an entire lake, um, Lake Managua. And in 1998, Hurricane Mitch swept through um, uh, Managua and dumped about six feet of water in five days, if you can imagine that. And as you can imagine, what happened to that lake is it flooded. It pushed out hundreds of thousands of refugees out into the rural areas. And one of those refugee camps uh, was called Nueva Vida, which means new life. And two of those people that got pushed out during that hurricane, during that storm, was Yurith's parents. They got pushed out to Nueva Vida, which has about 40,000 people living in it. And what quickly happened was there was no infrastructure in Nueva Vida. There was really no roads. The houses were just kind of made of tin, very quickly put together. Um, and two of those parents were Yurith, were Yurith's parents. At the age of five, um, herself, just like a lot of the other children in Nueva Vida, were extremely malnourished. And, and one of our partners on the ground, Orphan Network, had a, a school feeding program where children could come to school and not only get the meal, but also receive the education, which could help break that cycle of poverty. And one of those children that started going to that program, which was on the other side of Nueva Vida, was Yurith. Uh, and that picture there is her at 12, and she's happy, she's healthy. Uh, but I talked to some of the teachers that were there um, when she first arrived, and they said that she had blonde highlights um, in her hair. And those of you that know, that, that, that's basically some signs of, of malnutrition. 
Um, a lot of the, the girls in this area have this blue, beautiful dark hair, and she had kind of blonde streaks due to malnutrition. She also had some swelling of the belly, swollen ankles. She was very tired. Um, it's really hard to kind of pay attention in class or play at recess when you're not getting enough nutrients every day. Um, but by going to school, she was ensured one nutritious meal um, that she was going to get along with that life-changing education. And with just a few weeks and months and then years, a dramatic change happened in Urith. And not only did it change her life, but you could imagine all these children coming to the school feeding programs changes the families and changes the entire community just by getting these children into school. And you're also seeing things like crime rates decrease because children are off the streets, getting something to eat, and now they're not on the streets maybe begging for food or digging through trash to try to find something to eat, they're doing something productive. And our partner has a vocational training as well, uh, center, so they're taught like sewing and baking and jewelry making and farming, and they're using the, the food that they, they're farming to put back into the meals that we send them. Um, so it's this really great program. And the reason I share this story is because it's dramatically changed Europe's life and now, because of volunteers, just like volunteers here at Arcadia and all around the globe, are packaging meals, and now they have eight school feeding uh, centers in Nueva Vida, feeding over 1,000 children every single day because of the meals that we're sending. And they're able to educate these children. And a lot of them, the, the older children that I were talking to, were telling me that they're the first um, people, generation, um, in their families that are actually going to school and, and college and, and, and getting further educated, which a lot of times is the only chance for them to pull themselves out of their current situation. Um, so that, I share that because there are literally thousands of youths all across uh, the world that are, that are receiving these Stop Hunger Now meals. Um, if we go to the next slide. Great, so uh, creating the sustainable impact, as I mentioned, Stop Hunger Now, about 70% of our meals go into um, what we call transformational development programs. And that may be a school feeding program, it may be vocational training, maybe a medical clinic or an orphanage. And we're working towards 80% of our meals going there and we're going the right direction. We should have that accomplished by no later than 2015 is our goal. Um, but we are working towards that. And then another percentage of our meals, about 10 or so percent, is for disaster relief. A lot of people here rem still remember Hurricane Sandy, um, as well as the Philippines recently. Um, Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines, we were able to send a few million meals directly into those areas. Um, and also, along with the meals, we have room at the top of our containers, our 40-foot long metal shipping containers, to also send medical supplies and school supplies. And we really established these deep partnerships because we don't want to just send anything that we can find. We ask them the simple question of, what do you need? And then we try to go find it. So if they need medical supplies, if they need school supplies, if they need specific medicines, if they need pen and paper, whatever our partners need, we try to find it rather than just kind of sending whatever we can find. Um, so it's really targeted. And we've developed these wonderful partnerships that are all run by local people and their local organizations. All right, next slide. So I talked about creating the movement around the US. As I said, we had 17 locations from the East Coast to the West Coast packaging meals. Um, very excited to tell you that we are also opening international locations that are packaging these meals. This is a picture of an event I recently did in India with a, with a corporation in India. And um, they had a couple hundred thousand volunteers. I'm sorry, a, cu a couple hundred volunteers that packaged about 70,000 meals for the hungry. And um, you can see here we've packaged to date in about 12 different countries, uh, including Dominican Republic, England, Ireland, Italy, Kenya, Malaysia, Mexico, Philippines, Singapore, South Africa, Switzerland. All the underlined um, countries are actually um, locations that we have. Um, so this program started in about 2011, and we already have four international locations. My main job at Stop Hunger Now is to manage these international locations and help develop new locations in new countries around the globe. But what's really cool about this, think about it, this, is, this gets me really excited. It's completely transformational. It's, it's, it's incredible because not, instead of, of us sending meals from the U.S., which is still helpful, think about this. These are their own nonprofits, for instance, in South Africa, that are established by local people, that have local boards, um, are, are basically their own nonprofits happening in South Africa that are purchasing the meals from local farmers, the ingredients like rice. And they're able to, to fit the meal to locally fit the palate in the country. So they're purchasing meals locally. The meals are being packaged by local volunteers. And then they also are, are boots on the ground and they know the culture so well that they can find the best way to distribute the meals. 
So they're then finding the best ways to distribute the meals in those countries, which is really just transformational. And it's just really um, helping break the cycle of poverty in a targeted way in their own country. And these people are so excited because they're able to kind of pull their own country out of poverty, which is very exciting. You can go to the next slide. Um, very quick uh, story about one, the South Africa location that I mentioned. They started something called the Early Childhood Development Connect Program, ECD Connect. And, um, this is one of those programs that we probably would have never developed if, if we were just kind of sending meals um, internationally. It was truly developed by the team that was there in South Africa. And uh, you can see there's volunteers that are packaging meals. They've packaged a few million meals already in South Africa. And um, they're able to have volunteers that package the meals, actually distribute the meals the next day in the schools that they're working in. And they have these ECD schools that they've already vetted and they're working with long term. They're able to deliver the boxes directly to these schools. And then what that does is it frees up their cash flow as well um, so that they can purchase, um, I don't know if that's going off. <laughs> they can purchase um, things to help build their the capacity so they can build Maybe it's a room on the school. Maybe it's a restroom or a bathroom that they didn't have. Maybe it's an office they didn't have. So it's freeing up their budgets because they don't have to pay for food anymore um, that, uh, to, to purchase every, more things and help get more kids into school. And the South Africa team is actually uh, monthly meeting with each school and taking notes. And there's better reporting and monitoring and evaluation happening because they are on the ground. And they have volunteers making sure the meals are being used correctly. Um, and that is just super exciting. I, I truly. I think I understand that we are the only organization in the entire world that is doing this, that are setting up locations internationally that we're not running them, we're letting them have it because they're local people on the ground helping the local economy and then they're starting this movement amongst their own country to pull their own country out of poverty. And as I mentioned the list before, all these countries are getting involved and they're excited because they have this rising middle class that may be the first generation in the history of their country to be able to, to give back and fight cycle of um, hunger and poverty. So next slide. Next, last slide, this is the last one. Um, now it brings back to what can you do? What can you do to help? Um, what can you do to help? Uh, I want to start this off by just saying, uh, I, I just recently saw an interview with a, a head of a nonprofit, a, a large nonprofit, and they asked him how he got into what he was doing. He mentioned that um, he had an opportunity to just Quentin has got to go to India, and uh, he was able to meet Mother Teresa. And the first thing, he was a successful businessman, the first thing that Mother Teresa asked him was, what are you doing for the hungry, and what are you doing for the poor? And that's a pretty shocking, when you first meet somebody, to ask them that. And he kind of was taken back and, and honestly said, really not much. Um, kind of lived my life, successful businessman, uh, I'm, I'm exploring, trying to get involved, and she just kind of, kind of gave him a look like, why? How has it taken you so long to get back? Everybody can do something. Everybody, whether it's their times or their talents, how you can get involved is your time, your talents, um, trying to educate yourself about hunger and about the issues. There are so many incredible organizations here in the Philadelphia area. Some of them are speaking here today that would be wonderful to volunteer at or donate towards. Um, obviously, with Stop Hunger Now, you could even have your own meal packaging event, whatever it may be, but there's something that you can do. You could also advocate on behalf of the hungry, uh, be a voice uh, for the hungry. And some people here are politically inclined, and, and, and we also partner with an organization called Results that helps folks get involved in politically advocating on behalf of the hungry uh, as well. So there's many ways that you can get involved. You can check out StopHungerNow.org. Uh, for more information on how to get involved, but I really encourage you to do something. I mean, let's be honest. It's a cliche, but we only have one life to live, and we don't want to waste that. So I just ask that everybody ask themselves that question. What am I doing for the hungry, and what am I doing for the poor? Thank you.